Okay. Start with a little humor this afternoon. Now, I, may, I might add this as a regular feature, but these are things that were on actual employee resumes. Hard to believe, but reason for leaving last job, maturity leave. I think it was maternity <laughs> leave and they just spelled it wrong, but it could actually be true, right? It's best for employers that I not work with people. Hmm. Little red flag there. Uh, I am a perfectionist and rarely, if, if, ever forget details. <laughs> Two ifs in there. Uh, please don't cons misconstrue my 14 jobs as job happening. I have never quit a job. <laughs> probably another reason uh reason for leaving last job they insisted all employees get to work by 8 45 a.m every morning i could not work under those conditions mm. we're seeing that nowadays aren't we <laughs> uh let's see references none i left the path of destruction behind me <laughs> wow. hard to think they put that on a resume and then i received a plague for salesperson of the year i think i meant plaque can i just put a g instead of the q but all right enough of that welcome to ask the experts uh the tri-city regional chamber of commerce is serious to help business owners and leaders grow their companies with practical advice and answers that you can implement right away Special welcome to those watching remotely on Zoom. You are a valuable part of our audience today. And I hope you will uh, chat with me uh, throughout the, the presentation today. And hello to you watching on YouTube as well in the future. Tell us how the future is. Okay. <laughs> My name is Paul Casey, and I do leadership and team development at Growing Forward Services. And I'm the executive director at Leadership Tri Cities and privileged to be your facilitator today. This is a free benefit of your chamber membership and couldn't be possible without the generous sponsorship of STCU. With us today is Jessica. Come on up, Jessica. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jessica Crudup, and I am a community relations officer at STCU. And to STC is honored to sponsor Ask the Experts and uh, sponsor, excuse me, Ask the Experts and partner with the Tri Cities Regional Chamber of Commerce to support our local business community. The need to grow a workforce is a good sign for everybody. But where does a business go to find employees and vice versa? Things have changed since the days of word of mouth and dropping off numerous resumes at random businesses. Fortunately, today we will hear from four experts about current hiring tactics that will help you hire or get hired. Thank you all for coming out today. And thank you, SDCU, for your support. So for approximately half of our 90 minutes together, our experts will be presenting their gold nuggets on our topic of hiring today. And for the second half, they will answer your questions. If you'd like to ask a question, and we would encourage everyone here in the room and on Zoom to think of one question today, even if you're an introvert, giving you some uh, warning here at the beginning. Um, you can text me at 509-392-1895. You can write that down right now, or you can put it in your phone, uh, which keeps them anonymous. Or you can use the chat if you're on Zoom, or if you're here in the room, you can just raise your hand uh, if you want to uh, in a little while. I'm going to vet those questions and feed those to the experts, getting to as many as possible in our short time. Their contact information is all on the back counter with some other resources back there if you want to follow up with them following the session. Okay, let me introduce our experts today. We don't have two, we don't have three, we have four today. So first of all, Miley Wilson. She's the business relationship manager for Abadan, specializing in leadership and development strategies geared toward customer relationships, human capital investment, process improvement, organizational stability, revenue generation, risk management, marketing, and workplace culture. Is there anything you don't do there at Abadan? Okay, you deserve a raise, okay. Uh, prior to Abdan, Miley, Miley's focus was dedicated to connecting great people with great companies. Working with an outsourced staffing solution company for nearly two decades paved the way for her to acquire a holistic approach to job advertisement, candidate sourcing, interviewing methods, and overall hiring best practices. As a graduate from Gonzaga University with a Bachelor of Business Administration, she is a critical partner in having a direct impact on the company's largest investment, its people. Then we have Crystal Bright. Crystal is a WorkSource Systems Coordinator at WorkSource Columbia Basin. She's an inclusive leader with over 15 years leadership experience across a diverse set of industries, including education, hospitality, financial services, and developmental behavioral therapy. 
Through each of these roles, she's maintained a commitment to customer-centric practices and partnership, resulting in quality services that exceed expectations. She spent the last six years in workforce development, working with a talented team that unites business and job seekers so that they may be self-sufficient. Jose Sandoval. Jose is a local veteran employment representative serving Benton and Franklin counties at WorkSource Columbia Basin. He's an Army veteran. Thank you for your service. Uh, with seven years experience in workforce development, Jose used WorkSource in combination with veterans benefits to find employment himself. After working in the private sector, he chose to return to WorkSource to help other veterans understand the resources available. Initially, Jose worked with job seekers and now serves on the business services team, assisting employers to understand the benefits of using WorkSource as a resource for veteran recruitment. And finally, Michelle Gardner. She's a vocational specialist, services specialist with the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries. She serves individuals injured or diagnosed with an occupational disease while employed with a Washington employer. She's been working at the local work source in Kennewick since 2009 and was in the private sector for six and a half years prior. She's been a vocational rehabilitation counselor for over 20 years, assisting employers in keeping valued employees working by identifying job modifications and accommodations, educating on the programs of l &I to keep workers working and to develop job analyses. And she holds four national certifications. So we have a fantastic group here today. I want you guys to kick it off and then you'll be ready with your questions in just a few moments. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. If you, Miley Wilson with Abaddon. If you could give Tyler Best a call about that race. <laughs> All right. All right, awesome. <laughs> so super unique um, about our panel today in addition to, I guess, having four up here, is that I represent a business in the same seat as you. So if you are hiring, that is my role um, as part of the Avidan team. And in addition to having someone who's also sitting in your seat, we have resources available to us that uh, really can help us along the way of navigating what we have titled our presentation today of hiring. It's a two-sided equation. So while employers are experiencing lots of frustrations, so are job seekers. And so how do we have a conversation um, about connecting, identifying uh, the issues, the circumstances, where we're living today, the job market today, the types of skill sets that employers are seeking? Um, how do we bridge that gap to where we connect um, great people with employers? So hand this off. Great. So, oops. Where did I put this? What am I doing? The right, the right button, right click. There you Got go. it. All right. So we're going to start with an icebreaker roll. We actually have two. And on your tables, you'll find a sticky note uh, pad as well as some pens. And our two questions are really: What limitations or pain points are you experiencing in the hiring process? And that's whether you're a business who's looking to hire. Um, what what kinds of things are you running up against? Or if you are applying for jobs, um, what are some of the pain points and limitations that you're finding? Um, and once you have those written down, we are actually gonna keep going with the presentation, but you are free to get up, travel over and post those up on the first um, poster to the left. And then for those online, Paul, I don't know if we wanna kind of bridge through the chat, that would be awesome. Um, and then the other question is, what do you want to get out of this session? So while we're going through the presentation, we're going to take a quick peek, make sure we touch on these things um, and incorporate them to make sure that you're getting what you're wanting out of the presentation today as well. So again, if you'll just write down your limitations or pain points, you can write down one or multiple, um, as well as what you'd like to get out of the presentation. Mm -hmm. send them to Paul. Yep. <laughs> and if you're online, please send those to Paul. Okay. All right. And I hand it back to my awesome. So when I started in the staffing industry, it was 2002, and that's what it felt like. There were lots of jobs, lots of people lining up. Everything was in person. You saw them in person when you accepted their resume. Uh, there were different avenues for how they reached out to you. You had them come to your building or office directly. 
very different than what we have experiencing today, where the majority of it is behind a monitor. So while technology has done wonders for us, uh, there's the human element. There's, there's, you gotta find a balance between the two uh, to really enable to really handle a lot of these hiring frustrations. So that two-sided equation is really around the variables that each side is facing. So the frustrations around, you'll hear oftentimes feeling ghosted, you know, no response, they apply, but nothing ever happens. They don't even know if the employer's even seen it. Uh, from an, even with the employer side of it, um, challenged by wage and compensation. You know, it's posted now, they're not really sure uh, what to put on there. They're concerned about if I put it too low, will I not get job candidates? Um, if I put it too high, what expectation am I setting? What can I commit to? Um, lots of different frustrations happening on both sides. No, this is not meant to offend anybody. So these are put up here to uh, kind of indicate what, you know, you hear like you see postings, right? So even with the um, people just hiring people that'll show up, right? Uh, that's a big thing where you get through, all the way through the process, even if it's in the interview, sometimes they don't even show up for the interview, but they get all the way through the process and they might show up on the first day. They might come and work for a couple of days. Uh, so it's, it's very frustrating and of course it's very costly to have those situations happen. When looking up like top jobs, right, 2002, uh, would I ever have thought that being an influencer would be one of the highest paying jobs 20 years later? Probably not. I probably wouldn't even know what the, an influencer was. <laughs> so with that said, you know, there's, there's a little bit of humor in here uh, at the same time there's a little bit of truth and uh, you know, the, the quiet quitting uh, was a term that was almost said where quiet quitting was, I'm gonna quit and not give notice. But it's actually, you can have quiet quitters on your teams today and really not know how to handle that, right? So where they're just doing enough to get by. They're not doing anything more, doing anything less, their expectation of their job, and that's all they're really doing there. So um, <clears throat> the happy and retirement one on here, uh, there is a whole additional labor pool where previously retired are coming back to the workforce. So that's one of the markets that are on here of where it's almost a joke of, yeah, I retired 10 years ago, but I'm back. So uh, things along the line, whether that's economy driven or just having, still having that purpose, that mental capacity, wanting to work, um, it represents the pool that's available to us. So when we talk about the variables and we're looking specifically for what our job seekers looking for and what our employers looking for, uh, there, there sometimes there's some alignment and sometimes not some alignment along the lines of what a small business, a small employer can offer, right? So even when you talk about wages, you'll oftentimes hear, uh, oh gosh, I'm doing this hard work and I could leave this job and I can make this money over here and not have such of a stressful uh, or hard, tedious driven job. Um, and then with the, uh, from the employer standpoint, of it's all along the lines of culture. We're wanting to make sure that we're feeling inclusive. We're, we've got a diverse culture. Um, there, the skill sets there, we've got strong communication background skill sets um, and into even where that problem solving ability, right? So we're looking for individuals that wanna grow within the company um, to the cross-cultural competence. It's not just about having knowledge of different cultures. It's, it's about being curious about uh, why, why your culture, why, you know, tell us a little bit about the origin of that. So, uh, but having that positive attitude um, when you jump into the job seeker variables where they do want that career advancement, right? So if you've got an employer that wants a growth mindset, you have a job seeker that is looking for career advancement, those are where those fits match.
In my next slide, the same old thinking, the same old results, right? So how I used to hire 20 years ago is no longer looking, I can't do it the same. I will not get the, any type of results from that. So staying up to speed on what is relevant today for how you are sourcing your candidates, how you are going about where you're posting for your uh, positions, your openings, is very critical to the success of finding exactly who you are looking for. Um, and so, and with that, even as I stand here and say this today, that can also change to where in five years, whatever I'm doing today may no longer be, be relevant. So it's very important to stay on top of what works uh, and, and looking forward, right? So as trends are changing, uh, as the economy is changing, positions are changing, uh, it really is beneficial to stay in front of that now and try to see into the future a little bit about where do you need to adapt as your business grows, how you may have your hiring set up uh, might not scale. So if you are uh, bringing in, you know, 10% more revenue, how you're bringing in employees, your human capital, can you do it the same way you're doing it today and still be effective? All right, so we are to... Yeah, so if you haven't put up your stickies, please feel free. I'm gonna come over really quick just so that we have a better idea of what's being included and just share some of what's up here. I'm gonna give it just a minute. So thank you to each of you for sharing. So for limitations or pain points that have been shared so far, um, we've got no one wants part time. Lack of applicants, um, desire to work remotely. So two different things going on there. Um, connecting with qualified applicants. Um, candidates aren't understanding the value of the benefits. They're only looking at the value of the dollar amount, so salary or hourly wage. Um, filling out applications, for example, no resume, lack of detail, um, can't get a clear understanding of their qualifications for the position. Um, finding quality candidates, experience in the new way of doing things. Um, does someone want to expand on that at all? Um, that was me. I just think that um, before COVID, things were a lot different, and now that we're, you know, moving on, and it's more remote, and don't necessarily know how to do that. So the more flexibility, the yeah. technology, the remote work. <laughs> Entitlement, not finding quality applicants. Um, what's in it, in it for me? Attitude. So, um, mostly negative feedback from employers. <clears throat> not a single interview, resume, resume writing and interviewing tips. So some of the limitations and pain points. <clears throat> um, unlicensed candidates, again, quality candidates, qualified candidates, um, placement, timely, location, work schedule. Um, quiet quitting is so difficult. Um, match the right candidate to the right employer. <clears throat> Cannot provide benefits that are desired by the candidate. Um, fewer people want summer employment. So some of those more seasonal roles. Um, reaching a wider range of candidates for specialized and certified positions. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, organizing resumes for management, uh, being new to the recruitment process and having a lot to learn. So these are all things I'm excited to share that we'll be touching on during our presentation. And so share with us as we walk through that. And then for what folks are wanting to get out of the session, um, understanding how we can make our hiring process more simple and also achieve great results. And that really is the big thing, right? How do we streamline less time, less money, and get what we do? Um, advice on resume improvement, advice on interviews. Um, what employers are thinking about the hiring process these days? So there will be some time built in also um, to share a little bit. And then how to find candidates when we need them. So specialized skills. And then valuable resources and formats to reach qualified applicants. So I'm confident that through our presentation today that we'll touch on each of these things. And 
um, I'm excited to offer um, services directly that are tailored for you through our workforce team as well. So, thank you. All right, so we have some little fun trivia for those here in person. Yep, that works. Or I can run. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so, what percentage of job seekers do you think drop out of the recruiting process due to a poor first interaction with the recruiter or hiring manager? I'd say 40%. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll wait until somebody guesses this time. <laughs> and John, I was helping you out. Yeah. And Candy, we also have a couple of bags and then some light luggage um, yes. tags. So um, as they come around, when you guess the right answer, you do. Okay. All right. Uh, what percentage of candidates evaluate the brand before applying their job? 20%. 5%. 79. 80. 90. 95. 87. 86. Oh, she got it. <laughs> okay, let me hear you on roll. Oh, I think somebody said 80. Who said 80? Oh, we're playing Pisces, right? We're, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. How many job seekers say they apply but never hear back from the employer? Maybe 65. 90. <laughs> 85. A little more. 83. A little more. 82. You're getting close. 81. You're getting close. 79. Not 80. Oh, no. Oh, you're really hot, but you're getting, I mean, you're 79. Like, 75. 76. 77. <laughs> it's like the high level game. Right? Yeah. Right? Where's the putt putt game when you need it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what percentage of job seekers stated a company would be more attractive if their job posting had a visual element, whether that be a photo or a video? What percentage of job seekers said that would be more attractive? 92. 40 How much? 9%. Too low. <laughs> 35. 65. Lower. 40, 40. 40. 48. 40. Did you say 45? 40. 48. 40? 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Somebody online. Somebody online said 40. This is 45. Whoever is the closest to 51% without Brian. Somebody said 40 something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. People. Thanks for being interactive with us. Yes. Um, what is the percentage of the employee's annual salary for a bad hire? Yeah. Yeah. What is the, I guess, let me rephrase that. What is the cost of the, the percentage of an employee's annual salary? So if you have a, so based, so what is the cost of percentage wise of making a bad hire? 30%. Way higher. 80, 120%. You're on the right path. 300%. Okay, that's it. That is crazy. 200%. Wow. This is why we're here. <laughs> The percentage of global workforce comprised passive talent who are not actively job searching. 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 It's been a long day. Job searching. What is the percentage? Say that again. What is the percentage of global workforce com that comprises passive talent who are not actively job searching? Mm. So these would be individuals that are currently working 
that have a resume out on a job board? Uh, what percentage of them would be open to an opportunity? Oh, but they're not necessarily. They're not actively yeah. doing it. Maybe but the next best thing. 45%. Right. 30. 51. Almost there. Almost there. 60 percent yes so so what percentage of individuals who are unemployed seek work source services? 30%. Bingo. Yes, wow. one in three. So 33%. So if you're looking for a candidate pool. <laughs> How many job seekers are seen at WorkSource Columbia Basin on a monthly basis? 125. 130. You're going up. 150. A lot higher. 200. I'm going to be sneaky and tell you what the range because we do deal with a lot of seasonal unemployment. So there are times of the year in that range. Got giant Canada. <laughs> yes. 537. <laughs> I say eight to 1200. 1200. Yeah. 600 to 1100 job seekers. Wow. Because because of COVID, we changed our delivery service to telephone, virtual, in person, one on one, and regular self service resource room where we're also assisting. And to be fair, that's a statistic from the last weekend. Um, so our numbers this year are even chance. If you're looking to hire, who um, that was easy. <laughs> Between what percentage of customers enrolled in case managed services are veterans, low income, etc.? What does the etc. include? 45%. Individuals with disabilities, those that have justice involved, could be any number of things. Okay. 25%. 16. Okay. It's a lot lower. 20%. A lot lower. Wow. 5%. 4 to 6%. Well, wow, that's pretty accurate, man. I mean, that's <laughs> like. I want to see if this is That's a luggage term. Yeah, you just put it over your, your uh, handle. That way you can find your luggage at the airport. <laughs> oh, so it's just really good. I see it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So specific. To work source, what percentage would you say are more male customers versus female clients that they help? So, male clients and female clients, specific to work source, what percentage difference would you say for male versus female clients? 60 to 40. Close. 60 <laughs> more. Oh, what is it? 64. 60 to 40. Well, is that what you're saying? 60 to 40? She said 40 to 60. Oh, I said that's 40 it? To 60. Okay. So it's believed at WorkSource that they're usually only, that the majority of the clients are, I think, is it male or female? 50 50. And so the reason we're throwing these out is because we know as you're looking to hire and diversify your workforce. Um, that there are certain populations that maybe are being overlooked or after COVID, the pain point of having so many women drop out of the workforce. And so just reinforcing like if you're looking to bulk up, diversify, tap into talent that maybe you haven't considered, um, these are the folks that are coming through our doors. Physical and proverbial. Since we do virtual as well. So all right, last one, you guys and ladies. Sorry. Trying to be EEO there, so don't purple flag me. Uh, but true or false, there are tax incentives to hire qualified individuals all walks of life. True. true. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody gets candy, except for people online. I should have been here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. And we'll keep this moving. Let's go back one. Would anyone like to share uh, what brought them here today? If they have any specific pain point that, yeah. So it seems like the approach that we've been taking has been more passive to recruit and we need to learn how to, to do the non-passive recruiting apparently, because people don't just look for jobs and, and apply anymore. You have to find candidates. Absolutely. Do you find yourself in a position where it's a reactive hire to begin with? You needed them two months ago? No, because we do a lot of contract work. Okay. And so we're we're bidding on a, a proposal and we need to have somebody identified for that particular technical position. But there's no guarantee we're going to get the contract. And then gotcha. ha hanging somebody on a hook for that long might be a pain too. Yes. We have a term for that bread coming. Yeah, <laughs> I call them hanging on a hook and not wanting to be there. <laughs> right. Anyone else want to share? So we have uh, seeking a less passive approach to hiring, sourcing candidates and recruiting. Anyone else come with a specific problem they're trying to solve, pain point? Yeah. So mine is like kind of the polar opposite of hiring. I'm looking to get hired, um, okay. but I'm fresh out of college and I have no like real relevant work experience to the cyber field. So I'm wondering how to make my resume more appealing to people when all I can display is technical skills and not necessarily past work experience. Help us here. <laughs> all right, any, any other ones before we jump right into? Paul, did you have anybody pop online that wanted to share? No. Any pain okay. point specific? Okay. <laughs> So when we went and we looked at the variables that job seekers, why they're applying, what they're kind of looking for, there's lots of things that employers can do, right? They can take a look at what they're offering in-house um, along the lines of the compensation, the benefit plans, um, even jumping into things uh, like the career advancement opportunity and not to where it's uh, only taking into consideration uh, attracting candidates, but also hanging on to your camp, to your employees that you have on board already. Um, because that, again, you know, we, in business, we talk about referral for lead sources for new clients. That can be the same for the employees as well. So when you work for a great company, you are more inclined when an opportunity opens up that you're going to, hey, I work here and they are amazing and they're gonna talk about you. And that's what you want them talking about. Before, it's never really been um, such a high priority of taking consideration that job seekers are, they're doing the work on the back end. They're looking in, they're reading employee reviews. What's it like to work there? So what do, reviews say about um, if you do have employees that are writing anything. So it's not just that uh, uh, employers are interviewing and hiring candidates, the candidates are interviewing employers as well, which is why it's super important. It's critical to be ready from the get-go before you even get this started. So as employers, you can look at all of those things and we're going to jump um, right into the big one, which is having a hiring policy. This is something that really can set you up for success. One of the things that a lot of people, when I brought up the reactive hire, it's 10, you tend to procrastinate having to hire someone because you're hoping some miracle falls in your lap. <laughs> uh, so not having a hiring process in place because it feels like so much work to just even start from scratch every single time. If you have one in place, you're going to get the benefits of having a hiring policy that is something that you use every single time. It creates consistency. Uh, your hiring best practices are unbiased because you're doing something the same every time. Now, granted, the in parts of the hiring policy that we'll go through, uh, you will have to adapt some things here and there, depending on the position that you're looking for. Um, but we'll jump into each of those. 
What I also wanted to high, highlight around the benefits of having the hiring policy, there's also top 10 mistakes of not having one that will cost your organization money. So just from the poorly structured hiring process, you've got an improper articulation of the job description, not building a talent pipeline, inefficient sourcing of talent, complex application process, avoiding and or cutting corners on the pre-screening and assessing because you're in a position where you're desperate and you need someone on the team, delays due to interviews, previously brought up that kind of that breadcrumbing too, you're trying to keep some on the hook, uh, no clarity in decision making, you're taking too long to make that decision, handling every recruitment step manually, needing to find that balance between the human element and obviously technology to make sure that it's efficient, and then wrapping up tasks in a timely manner. More often than not, small businesses, uh, whoever is doing the hiring is also wearing 10 other hats. So making sure that time management part of it taken into consideration of uh, being effective and finding the right people and not losing them um, is critical. So in there are four stages to an effective hiring policy. So we've got planning, recruitment, employee selection and onboarding. We'll just kick it off right here for the, the planning part of it. So again, we talked about the benefits of the planning. So first you've really identified the position and you have to take into consideration uh, who is going to be interviewing. Who's the hiring manager? Who's the hiring team? Are they equipped with the skills to do the interviews? making sure that they are set up for success. Uh, oftentimes, I don't know if in the did you know, the little trivia, where 40% walk away from an opportunity based on that first interaction that they've had with the hiring manager. So whoever is doing the interviewing, whether, whether it's just a one person, it's a hiring team, make sure that they have a toolkit um, to do that successfully. Um, some of the other items, uh, the mapping out the plan, right? So we talked about sometimes that even though you have your hiring policy, one position, say it's an executive level or a management level, that would take a little bit longer. So if you kind of framework that out on a calendar, uh, you, it, you'll be way more successful because as you're doing those interviews, uh, you're going to be able to set the expectation up front because that's part of the issue too, is where you begin the process and then there's maybe two weeks have passed and they haven't heard from you. So that's making sure that you have a map and that you are sharing that information. One of the variables for the job seekers was they wanted transparency, right? So they, they kind of want to know up front, what does this look like? The other parts too, um, the components of the job offer, very important, right? So as you're planning this, you're going to want to be thinking about compensation. Is this full-time? Is this part-time? Um, what type of benefits are you going to be able to offer? Um, going into, we would take it a step further where we are already thinking of the one-year performance evaluation. What are we planning on holding them accountable to? What KPI for that role are we going to be evaluating over the course of the year? Because these are all going to be factors that are elements in creating the job description, the essential functions, being specific. Oftentimes, job descriptions can be very vague. And so that is confusing. So it's very difficult to hold someone accountable to those expectations when they aren't clear themselves. So again, knowing all the different little components of the position, and then you're going to create that job posting advertisement, whether and whether you have a visual or non-visual, that job posting advertisement should map out the job essential functions from the job description. That will help people go in and see and when you're asking those interview questions that are specific to the job posting to really make sure that they understand what is the position that they're applying for. Uh, that's super helpful when you're creating that job advertisement. You also kind of want it to be a little bit fun, right? So you want to include some of those things about your culture, right? What makes it great to work 
for your company uh, to put in key terms that are attractive. Uh, or again, like going back to the core values, if humor, having fun, and, uh, you know, integrity, um, honesty, whatever those core values are, figure out a way to incorporate those into that advertisement. And lastly, in that planning, where are you going to post it? Well, who do you need to see it? Where is your audience at? What type of role is it? Um, is it something that you're going to be putting up on to LinkedIn? Are you going to keep it to Facebook? Are you paying for a job board from Indeed or ZipRecruiter, any of those? Um, are you posting it at WorkSource? No cost. You're in the cost. <laughs> and there are third party businesses here locally that are for cost, but will help take a lot of that pain off of your plate as well. So think about where you want to put it uh, that will attract the individuals that you're looking for. The recruitment part, obviously, the sourcing candidates, again, super important in uh, finding who exactly you're looking for. Oftentimes, they, they call it the fishing versus hunting, right? So fishing, you're dropping that lure out there and you're just seeing who bites onto it and you're reeling them in and then you're kind of going through their resume and sometimes you're wondering, I'm not sure why they apply for this one. Uh, to the hunting is, like we said, those passive job seekers that do have their resumes out there that aren't necessarily actively looking, but open for opportunities. Um, the, the hunting even goes into reaching out to your colleagues, your friends, family, who do you know, referral sources, uh, seeking individuals that you trust, that you know would send you a qualified candidate. Um, your internal, your, your existing staff can sometimes be great referral sources for other individuals that they've worked with along the way, that would be a great fit. They fit with your culture. Uh, they can also be a way of hunting for a specific person. The review of the applications, uh, you know, that's it's time consuming, right? Sometimes you can put up a job posting and you get a hundred plus <laughs> resumes to kind of sort through. Uh, again, utilizing those job boards that that do kind of do some of the screening out for you. Um, this is one where when you map out that um, planning phase of it, we will literally set it to where we're gonna post this this date and we are going to accept resumes for three weeks. Everything that came in that first week will be reviewed. We will make a yes, no, maybe. And the next week, following week, yes, no, maybe. And then it kind of goes from there. So. To, and that it's almost a way of making it a bite size as opposed to locking out one one day for three hours where you're going to go through all of the resumes because sometimes it can be overwhelming, um, especially even if you have a career page on your web page, right? So sometimes you'll get multiple um, candidates applying more than one way. So that can also feed into the volume of applications that you're getting, resumes that you're getting. Planning of the interviews, again, super important. Who's in the room? Do they have the toolkit? What does the interviews look like? Are you gonna do a phone screen? Are you gonna can take that into consideration, especially if it's something that's a customer service role, they're gonna be, in, they're going to interface with customers through the phone, uh, how do they um, interact even with their employees when they're speaking? Uh, communication obviously is huge, no matter what organization you are with. Uh, so that can be a tool where you do a phone screen right up front. It does not have to be long, 10 to 15 minutes. And the way I encourage to kind of phrase it is, not everything shows up about a person on paper. So take that 10 to 15 minutes and Preliminary questions. What did you notice in the job advertisement that that attracted you to even apply for this? Um, going into, you can ask definitely a few questions about the resume itself, but it's really seeing the engagement, the interaction. You know, they pleasure to talk to, um, but not everybody does well on the phone screen either. Doesn't necessarily screen them out, <laughs> but it is a tool, especially if you are looking for someone who will be customer facing over the phone. 
uh, the follow-up uh, interviews that you could have planned out on the map are uh, the in-person. There can be the panel interview that's specifically with the team. And each type of interview should have a purpose. So when they're having the interview with the hiring manager uh, to then be followed up with the team, if you can get buy-in from the team that's going to be working with that individual, it's a much better outcome than if you don't. Now, in some cases, there are owners that really want a culture shift and they are looking for someone who's kind of outside the box of who is the culture that they want to be, want to become. So those types of, um, plan, again, in that planning phase, what is the, per, you know, what is the purpose of this hire? What are you trying to accomplish by bringing a new person onto the team? The conducting the interviews, have your questions ready. Make sure that they are not violating any laws. So knowing it's very easy to, I guess, accidentally get, because you're curious in the interview. And sometimes you can make a comment that's just, reacting to something that they've already shared. So um, even with um, talking about family, right? And you're thinking, oh, okay, family, that that should be, you know, free game. And they share something along the lines of, uh, well, I have two and they follow the question. So are you, are you done? Are you going to be having more children? That can actually hurt you down the road if you don't select that person, right? They could say, oh, well, I wasn't selected because I I shared with that hiring manager that I am planning to have more children. So there's, you have to be very specific on the questions and be very careful about not accidentally treading water <laughs> when you're just being curious and having a conversation. So the interview questions, keep them to the questions. Uh, obviously you wanna interface well, but just, you're clear. Um, I did bring a handout that you guys can take when you leave, which includes those interview questions that can somehow lead you into uh, treacherous waters. So applicant assessment, training, right? Not even the training, I'm sorry, assessment skills. So on job boards, you can require that they go through some skills tests. Uh, it may be part of when you look at the job where you have a training assessment or like a, a fit test, uh, something along those lines. Make sure that it's first applicable to the position. It's uh, required based because they're gonna be doing some manual labor. We need to see what they're saying as far as those that they are fit to successfully be able to be in that position safely. Uh, so we'll get a little bit to, um, We've got some additional information on the assessments that we can talk about, that we can get some help from our co-panelists here. Employee selection, very important to have your top three identified. The reason for that is if your top candidate wants to negotiate and you are not prepared to negotiate, so, I have negotiate, negotiation at the end because you have to know how far you're you're willing to bend one way or the other. And, you know, a lot of times you don't quite know, right? So you want to get together with the other individuals who are doing the hiring saying, hey, here's, here's the counter offer to our offer. Uh, are we willing to bend on compensation? Oh, they asked for... Uh, 40 more hours of PTO because if they're leaving that employer, that's where they're at right now. They don't want to lose that time. Uh, these are the benefits they're getting here. Uh, so there's so many different things that they that can be negotiated. We talk about the remote work, the hybrid. Uh, it's one of those things that's frustrating for employers because they can post that it's an on-site position. But by the time it gets to the job offer, it can turn into... That's wonderful. Is it okay if I start there on site every day for the first two months or maybe even six months? And then after six months, can I do three days on site and then two days remote? So that negotiation part, you must know where you're willing to bend. And then that way you can make a 
selection a lot faster. Uh, if you aren't willing to bend, you've got that top two, right? If you're already, you've still got someone who, you know, this probably isn't going to be a fit for us, depending on what they're asking for, uh, that you already have maybe one to two backups that were also, they were yes, we would definitely want them on our team. If we had more than one opening, we would hire all three of them. Uh, so having that next person in line doesn't mean you won't end up negotiating still, but you're not at a point where there's a delay uh, to where you're having to start from scratch. Uh, so definitely keep moving those top candidates through the process. Job offer again, it's very important to be specific on what you're offering. So that goes into that compensation. What does it include for benefits? Uh, and that even goes into anything if they do, if there's a car involved, uh, anything that's a part of that job offer package, you want that in your job description, or sorry, your job offer. Onboarding, that's our uh, next phase. Um, this one, we've, we've really revamped in-house ourselves. Uh, one of the things, like we really thought it was very important for what does it feel like on a person's first day? Mm -hmm. So we have an agenda from the moment that they arrive to making them feel like it, extremely special, that they are a part of this team. Uh, it's super important to be ready, right? Make sure they have the tools that they're supposed to have. Is their computer ready? Uh, do they have a desk space ready? The last thing you wanna do is here's your space. If you wanna just clean out everything from what was left behind, <laughs> have at it. We're not keeping anything. Uh, having that space ready, uh, knowing who is involved in that onboarding of the first day. So if they are gonna be doing um, application type stuff, sitting with uh, payroll or the person overseeing if you have benefits, uh, having it timed out, keep trying to keep that on track uh, to where that individual walks away from that, even that first day, knowing where they're showing up the next day, who they're going to be with, how they're gonna be spending their time. Uh, and that's what they're gonna talk about, right? So again, we always have to remember that what our process looks like any individual that's going through it is walking away and they're sharing that, right? So if you're in a situation where you put a post and you've never responded, that's what they're talking about. They're saying, well, I applied for that job and never heard anything. Job seekers are going to be less likely to apply for any future jobs. So super important. Again, that's why that hiring process is uh, extremely important. And up next, like I said, I'm in your seat. Help is here. <laughs> you don't have the hiring process, application stuff. They've got business solutions and job seeker solutions. Yeah, so super excited to share. I'm gonna start with just an overview of what WorkSource is. Um, by show of hands, how many of you have been to WorkSource or used WorkSource services? Huh? Too shabby, awesome. So. Um, WorkSource, uh, we're right over on Kellogg, and we are your comprehensive American job center. And what that means to you is we're really designed to be a one-stop shop where you can get all of your hiring needs met, or if you're looking for work, we can help. Um, so the American Job Center Network is a nationwide network. In Washington, we're called WorkSource. So just a little bit of history lesson here. Um, we are a partnership of state, local not-for-profit and educational institutions here locally. Um, I point that out because in every community, we look different. And the reason for that is because every community has different needs, um, whether it's business need or different community members. So there are actually 12 workforce development areas across the state. Um, we are number 11 here in Benton and Franklin counties, and we have eight partners in-house right now. Um, so I know this is super teeny tiny, so I'm going to go ahead and read them off. Um, Career Path Services, a not-for-profit out of Spokane. We also have um, the Department of Services for the Blind. We have, um, well, the SHS is off-site, so we work with the Community Service Office here in Kennewick as well. Um, we also have Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. 
Um, just trying to read them in order. If I'm emailing my folks, I can do it really fast. <laughs> we have Employment Security Department, thank you. Um, and so they provide a ton of different resources. We'll get more into that about what we do and don't do on site. Um, Labor and Industries, and then Opportunities Industrialization, Industrialization Center of Washington, as well as Columbia Basin College. So that's our core team here in the Benton Franklin or WorkSource Columbia Basin office. Um, we have two customers at WorkSource. Um, and I think this is becoming clearer, but our customers are business and job seekers um, with the intent of helping businesses at any point in their business cycle. So whether you are ramping up and are a new business, whether you are looking to hire, um, even if you're kind of on an even keel, like how can we help streamline processes while things are going well? Um, and then if you are looking at downsizing, um, what does it look like to help out with some of the shared work programs um, to prevent layoffs or in the event that there is a layoff to be able to support the employees that you'll be letting go. Um, in terms of job seekers, we do provide services for those that are looking for work. Um, that can, we'll go more in depth into those services, um, but we offer what we call basic career services, which are available to anyone. And that could be resume, interviewing, um, workshops, things like that, networking, um, as well as case managed services. And those are a little bit more in depth. So if someone is seeking more assistance or maybe they're in a situation where um, they are needing more help, we can walk alongside them to help them to achieve their goals. Um, and what that really means is that at the end of the road, our gold star is how we're connecting business and job seekers who are qualified for the roles and making sure that we're helping boost the economy, increase self-sufficiency, um, and all of those things. Um, I did want to highlight that at WorkSource, we have three main pillars. We're really looking for customer satisfaction, looking to continuously improve, um, and then also leveraging resources. So we all know resources are limited. And so the reason I bring this up is as you work with us, if you have feedback, we want to hear it. And if you're someone who has resources, we want to partner. So um, please come talk to me if you have any specific feedback or ideas. Um, so as Miley pointed out, um, we really, our presentations around kind of a trifecta of services. So um, as we talk through WorkSource services, how do we help you find new team members and expand your applicant pool? Um, and identify qualified candidates. And if they're not, how do we know what it is you're needing and work with local educational institutions to help provide those resources to help train folks up? Or if you have incumbent workers, folks that are already working for you that you need upskill, how do we support? Um, the second part of that is really ensuring the effective hiring process. And so um, we have a business service team that can help with that. Um, and then retention. So for those that you have that you want to keep, how do we help keep them? So what you'll see up on the screen is our basic menu of services. We have the copies in the back. This is really high level. We're really looking for an opportunity to connect with you one-on-one, -on -one, find out what your goals are and how we can walk alongside you to meet them. Um, I do want to point out that there is some confusion about our office. WorkSource is a reemployment center. And so we do work really closely with sister companies like unemployment insurance, um, but on the other side, how we get people back to work quickly. Um, we can also get you connected to the resources that you might need if you're a business um, through online portal and et cetera. Um, the other thing about it is that we also work closely with paid family medical leave, uh, shared work, and some other departments. And so we're a connector in that realm. Um, but in terms of direct service delivery, we are looking to um, help with recruitment um, and those different places in, in your business cycle, or if you're looking for assistance in getting back to work. So I think that's everything that I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the baton over to Jose. Yes, <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to be talking about business services uh, and all our many of the services that you just saw. So it is a lot. I'm gonna 
hopefully answer your question regarding how do I proactively recruit because people are not applying, I assume, or how do I find these individuals? So uh, our menu of services, lots of information there. Could be solutions, staffing resources, incentives. I'm gonna dive into all of them momentarily, but I'll let you guys take a look, take a snapshot if you want. I think this PowerPoint is gonna be sent to you as well for future review. So a uh, couple things uh, that we do when you come into WorkSource is we sit with you one-on-one, -on -one, give you that personalized individual service as a business, because you're trying to figure out what's wrong with my business, how do I help myself out for my business. Uh, I guess my question to you is how many businesses have utilized WorkSource law for posting job? One, two, okay, cool. So you do have access to that, that's great. Uh, it's your dollar that is paying for that service. So if you haven't used it, definitely post on there if you haven't. Uh, on top of that, you can use that as a active recruitment strategy to search for jobs or job seekers. You know, we got a couple job seekers here, so we might as well see what they're interested in. Maybe they could be part of your uh, pool. Uh, job fairs and hiring events, we definitely can have a a utilize a facility in your need or a hiring event needed, or we'll hook you up with points of contact throughout the community through our community partners to also have a hiring event at a different location. Because sometimes our locations are for some individuals, so might as well go to WSU Tri Cities, a CBC, or Goodwill. Those are main partner uh, companies that we work with, so that way you can you know be out in the community where the job seekers are at. Oh, and Brazen, I forgot. So we do also do have online platform called Brazen. That way, if you want to just be at on your own website or own computer, you can connect with me and we can do an online site. I forgot, with COVID, we all went virtual. Um, we also can talk to you about our wage account, data, training resources, and um, again, all this is no cost to you. Just come walk on in, give us a call, We'll talk to you, figure out where your pain points are as we talked earlier about, and help you navigate that with you. Okay, because that's what we're here. We're here to help provide you a solution to your problem. Okay. For those of you that are unfamiliar with WorkSourceLaw.com, this is what the WorkSourceLaw.com website looks like. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a dark blue individual, a silhouette, and that's where you'll log in and create your own account. I just wanted to provide that for you. Uh, we can go more in depth. Um, but when you're in there, this is your employer dashboard. You can have all kinds of job postings that you want to fill. So as you can see from right to left, uh, if there's anybody that matches your job posting, if there's anybody that actually applied, there's anybody that actually clicked on it, that's where you, those are the three things that you can kind of see off the get-go. Uh, the reason why I say the clicks, is because maybe you're click getting a lot of clicks, but you're not getting anybody applied mm -hmm. and you haven't connected. So then you can figure out, hey, maybe this is related to my job posting. What's wrong with my job posting? And we can dive deeper into, you know, giving you feedback because maybe you think that, and just like a resume, I think my resume is perfect. I'm not getting a job. Okay, maybe your job, job description is too lengthy and we need to cut it down, cut off the fat, make short, sweet to the point. So that way our job seeker can actually apply to the job and make it easier for them to understand, hey, I actually do have a skill set needed for this position. Um, so that's what I've had a couple conversations with some employees about. So if you're getting lots of clicks, no applies, that could be an issue. Um, what else? Uh, you can also actively recruit for job seekers. Uh, and uh, post posting is pretty simple. It's, you know, we're tied to monster.com, so you'll be able to have you know two for one special, no cost to you. Um, and we'll just go to the next slide. Uh, searching for resume. So if you haven't, this is where you can, you know, type in, uh, I see CTE, so I'm assuming construction. Right. Yes. It's only construction labor. <laughs> you just type in construction labor, type search. Well, just narrow it down to 50 miles or uh, originally. You'll be able to find, I'd say, you know, 100 individuals with that. But then it comes down to, now I got to give them a call. So with each individual, you'll be able to see on WorkSource Law and on Monster, uh, because there's two different toggle switches. So type in construction labor, 
um, WorkSource Law, you'll be able to click on the individual, get their contact information. Fingers crossed, hopefully, they actually have a good phone number for you to actually give them a quick cold call if you have time and availability to do that, if, again, they meet your needs. If not, my biggest suggestion is just BCC all the individuals that may meet your criteria. Send them a quick email. Hey, if you're interested, give me a call. Give me a call. Again, uh, just some suggestions. You can always dive deeper down. But again, we are kind of like Indeed. So if you're using Indeed and um, not utilizing our WorkSourceLaw.com, we're using the same Sixth Sense technology to you know plug and play all kinds of information in uh, to find a candidate through our WorkSourceLaw.com recruit recruiter set. Uh, what else? Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for veterans. Definitely hire veterans. We come with lots of tax incentives. I'm pretty sure you're all aware. Hire a veteran. Uh, if you're again looking for a veteran, they'll be tagged with this uh, gold star, which is nice to have. It signifies that you know they are signifying to you that they're a veteran. Um, again, this is just one demographic. If you're looking for other demographics, you can also narrow it down to uh, disabled individuals or anything like that. So, do you want to speak to the work that you're doing with Scott? with the veterans team, because there are so many qualified applicants in the community who maybe don't know the right words on their resume. Mm -hmm. And so our business service team is actually, the work you're doing is braided with um, job seeker services. So I don't know if you want to mention that because this is a good opportunity to say, hey, if you're interested in helping out with that. Yeah, so um, the way it kind of works out in my mind is, uh, you know me, I know you, now, your network, your net worth is bigger than your net worth. You're trying to grow your company. So if you ask me, hey, I got this position, I posted it on worksourcelaw.com. I'm not getting any clicks. Give us a call. We can shoot it to our center staff. Let them know that you are now trying to be, you know, getting that extra assistance. Because maybe one of our case managers that's working with a job seeker has that skill set that didn't, that missed it somehow when they're active recruitment job search we can push that out to our center staff to help them out. What you're trying to say? Yeah, so basically the way that we serve, because we do have a team that serves businesses and job seekers, um, as Jose mentioned, we have an opportunity to help job seekers who may be um, applying, um, trying to get their resume up to date, and they're not finding that they're getting any interest. Um, and the language just doesn't match, or they're not able to identify those transferable or lived skills. And so our team is able to support that in the work that we do with both job seekers and businesses. And so we really want to be a piece of solving that, um, because there are probably folks in the community that you're missing out on, um, or folks who are just coming out of school that, like, how do we talk about that and say, what is the value add? I guess I could give you the example, because I work with lots of Hanford employers. Uh, for our veterans that I'm working with, if they're interested in working out, say, you know, Bechtel, uh, I'll shoot a, I'll get the resume from Scott who's working with a veteran. I'll shoot that resume to the point of contact at Bechtel, and they'll give me a resume review, letting me know if A, the veteran's qualified or not, pretty much. And then hopefully I get some feedback to provide to that veteran so that they can target it a little bit more to your liking and it'll kill towards the resume. So if you want to have that extra assistance, just let us know, and then we can have that point of contact for a job seeker. Email you the resume, you get the feedback. We can then target it a little bit more for that job seeker to your liking, and then tell that individual to apply. So that's one of those extra benefits that we can help you out with, where mm -hmm. the job seeker can only do so much without extra assistance. So. Uh, talking about Getting veterans, if you haven't registered with yes vets, uh, it's House Bill 2040, that's 2015, that came through legislation. So this is an incentive for yourself to post on your uh, wall, on your tagline, so that way, or even on your uh, on your application. So that way, veterans like myself, when we see this. They're going to think, oh, hey, this veteran, this employer is actually a veteran friendly employer. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to apply with my resume and hopefully you get the job. So that's the significance of using this. It also just lets the veteran know, hey, you know, there's probably other veterans in this 
an employer that I'm going to work with, so we'll probably get along a little bit better. We did such a great job because of this pilot program of yes vets that the federal government came out with higher vets rebellion in 2017, and they're same thing, getting uh, veterans to apply and to your company so that way you can keep retaining the veterans, keep getting veterans employed, and you know doing a great job for our veterans community. Again, it's just an incentive to. Uh, for you, if you want. Uh, personalized individualized services. I think I already went over this. If I have not, let me know. Uh, we can definitely provide candidate assessments. I think we talked earlier about that. Uh, it's all dependent on your needs. And uh, Crystal would be more, be the point of contact after this conversation to get more information on how these assessments work. So again, no cost to you. Um, Applicant recruitment kind of gave you that example of how we can provide veterans, job seekers to you. Again, give us an email, give us a call, let us know that, hey, this is the position that I want, these are all the skills that's needed, let us know. And we can push that to a center staff that's case managing anywhere between 15 to 50 individuals on their caseload. So that's definitely a, a pool that you can use from. Uh, again, hiring events, space to use for interviewing. Conducting, market, uh, conducting interviews, or if your uh, facility decides to shut down because power outage randomly on one day, you can say, hey, you have room. We should be able to accommodate it. And, you know, making sure that you are complying with state and federal laws, such as uh, the salary. Everybody knows as of January 1st, 2023, everybody has to put a salary range, heat-related uh, and smoke-related care for workers and ergonomics. So we can provide you that assistance through our LMI program uh, connection that we have. Uh, again, I did talk to you about work opportunity tax credit, veterans come with tax credits, but remember that some of our job seekers coming in through our doors also come with tax credits. Pretty sure you're aware of that. But the biggest thing that I think and is near and dear to my heart is the federal fidelity bond. Everyone's familiar with the federal fidelity bond? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna dive deep. A little bit into this. Uh, most of the individuals that do come uh, with the federal fidelity bond are economically disadvantaged individuals with little no work history, dishonorable discharge veterans, unfortunately, uh, TANF recipients, individuals with poor credit history, and individuals uh, re recovering from substance abuse, and last but not least, uh, an individual that has a justice involvement issue. So if you want to there was like six different pools of individuals that I just talked to you about. So if an individual is working, um, I'm going to use construction for an example, you can definitely put that person under a bond. Or uh, if an individual at your work at, say, Microsoft came in with a DUI, now you obviously that person has just involved an issue. And, you know, put, put them under a bond through their EPA if you have that. And the bond's free to them. Yes, hundred percent free. It's a quick phone number. It's the same phone number that you call for the work opportunity tax credit. So when you call the work opportunity tax credit phone number, be like, "Hey, I'm not too sure about this individual. Can you also see if they can come with a bond?" To be fair, it's somebody that's qualified that you might be feeling a little bit nervous about taking a risk on, um, and it, chances are it's going to be just fine. But you just want that peace of mind, and so these are individuals who. A lot of times through no circumstance of their own, for example, with the COVID and hardships with finance and things like that, um, may not have a great credit history. So um, just keeping that in mind that you've got that little bit of peace of mind. Yep. And I'm going to pass it really quick over to Preferred Work through LNI because I'm not with LNI, but I know that they have lots of benefits. So the preferred worker program is really for you, the employer, and it's designed that when you bring in a worker that has been injured on the job in the past, you are protected. So for the first three years that you have this individual working for them, if they get re-injured on the job, you are not charged for that injury, but they still get the benefits that they need. In addition to that, you get a break on your industrial insurance rates 
which could be significant. In some cases, you may pay $27.50 for one person who is a preferred worker, or you may actually be paying maybe $200 a quarter for that other person doing the same job. So there's that very significant break there. On top of that, you get half of their base wages up to six, up to $10,000 or 66 working days of your choosing for two years of their wages reimbursed back to you. In addition, if you keep them employed for consecutively for a year, you'll get a financial incentive that equals either 10% of their annual wages or $10,000, whichever is less. And then if there's any special tools or equipment that they need that you do not already provide, you can get reimbursed by the department up to $2,500. The individual gets up to $400 for clothing if there's special clothing that they need that you don't already provide. Um, I think I touched on everything. It, it's a fantastic program that we have had for years and years and years. We've beefed it up in 2014 to match our state of work program. Thank you, Michelle. Got about five minutes, guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, just wanted to let you all know that we do have programs within WorkSource. So if you do get a referral from WorkSource, you can ask if they've been case managed with one of our partner agencies that has on the job training or work experience. Uh, the on the job training provides uh, up to 50% wage reimbursement after they're trained internships or work experiences where we provide you that in the individual to understand the work that they're going to be doing and it's free of charge or should I say no cost to you so that way they get trained in their new career field. If you need, which I heard over there on the pain points uh, from assistance, we do have connections with CDC to help re-up your workforce individual or your employee to get the training needed through CDC classes and um, again, guided to skills and training. Mm -hmm. Labor market information. We do have our local economist, Aisha, that will provide you more in-depth data to see where your trends are, see where uh, you can get, uh, let's see, see where, you, see where uh, the industry is going for your uh, industry. And wages, staff and partners. And again, there's lots of data out there if you want to know where your industry is going. I can get you uh, either contact information. Some upcoming opportunities to connect with us. Uh, we got the veteran and military spouse uh, meet and greet or meet the employer. We are partnered with WSU and CDC Paul Career Fair. And if you are a resource, uh, or you want to provide assistance to veterans, we have a veteran stand on. I think there's some more information after that. Yeah. I'm going to pass this to Michelle. And while you're doing that, uh, shameless plug, if you're not following us on Facebook, you can learn more about opportunities to connect and network, um, potentially recruit at some of the events we're doing. All right, so this is going to be like speed dating. Since we have such a short amount of time. Whenever my card is back there, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. All right, so let's see how good I can do. All right, preparing candidates for you. We do a lot of things to prepare our job seekers for you. That includes teaching them how to do appropriate job search, career planning and training, resources, our hiring events that we've touched on, as well as special technology. As far as job searching, we have a wide variety of workshops that teach people how to do uh, resumes, interviewing skills, how to fill out a basic job application. You think most people would know that. Yeah, I think we heard earlier how they don't. Uh, <laughs> as well as teaching them how to network, how to network and do a, a good job match job search for them as appropriate to the career that they're looking for. For career planning and training, we have some very specialized career counselors or employment specialists, also is what we call them, to sit down with job seekers, especially those who are fresh out of college. Really hope you come in. Got so many ideas for you. <laughs> uh, She's amazing. Sit down with you to help you figure out what you need to do to beef up your, your um, job search, help you find a new career if you're looking at changing your career. Uh, we have a wide variety of assessment tools. Uh, tools including self-assessments and more comprehensive assessments that include the Meyer-Briggs type indicator and the world of work inventory. Um, we have access to labor market and wage information. And this is really key and important for our job seekers to teach them what their return on a value is 
so that they understand that the wages that are posted in those job postings is not the actual wage. Those benefits have, have financial implications as well, and teaching them to understand what the true market value is of the position that they're applying to. As well as giving them GED preparation, we've got, we've just started doing that. And we've also started doing digital literacy workshops, partnering with Goodwill on Wednesdays to help our job seekers learn how to use computers, Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and the like. Um, we have a whole bunch of different community resource referrals that we provide, two-on-one, um, Impact Compassion. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They're amazing. They're on Facebook. Uh, our veteran services, which are the best in the in the state, by the way, and nation. And yes, I am prejudiced when it comes to that. <laughs> we have translation and interpretation services. So anyone that can come into our center that needs any kind of translation interpretation services, we can provide that either in person or by telephone. We have staff that speak Russian, um, Spanish, and we even have an ASL individual. And then also disability management resources. So we have uh, staff, including myself, that can assist you in coming up with some ideas and recruiting and hiring individuals with disabilities, not just workers that have been injured on the job. Um, also through um, our partnership with LNI, we have uh, what's called the Early Return to Work Program, where as a benefit for our employers in our area, we, we do offer free ergonomic assessments to your uh, workstations, as well as showing you what some of our grants programs that we have that you can apply for so you can implement some of those ergonomic assessments at no cost to you, um, as well as creating a return to work plan so that if you do have somebody gets injured or let's just say they're getting into a car wreck or they have a, an, a sickness of some sort, having a good return to work plan shows that your employers that you really care and that keeps people motivated to stay. Um, we have a wide variety of technology that includes our computers and internet access. So if you have your own laptop, or a tablet, you come in and hook up to our internet for free. We also have three different workstations that have sit stand work desks. Uh, we also have uh, assistive technology that is available to individuals uh, that are hard of hearing, that are uh, have visual issues, um, as well as if they need like an ergonomic keyboard or whatnot. We've got that. We also provide hiring events job fairs, employer hiring events, mock interviews, and employer panels. How am I doing on time? I'm, I'm moving to time. Okay. And then finally, business supports for hiring individuals with disabilities. We have staff um, that are very uh, educated in Section 503, which is under the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, that states that an employer or a federal contractor or subcontractor has to have a workforce that makes up 15% of individuals that are with disabilities and veterans. If you do business with local government, schools, doesn't matter. You are now a federal contractor or subcontractor and you are subject to that section 503. The work opportunity tax credits, our preferred worker program, the no cost ergonomic assessment, return to work planning, Job Accommodation Consultation and the State Work Program. We had some retention best practices. I don't know if you want to jump to questions and just leave the slide deck up. And that way, if you have questions about these in particular, we can answer them. Um, yeah, we've got just a few minutes for questions. I have a question for the hiring manager. There's questions they can't ask. But if you were to have your, your candidates have lunch with the rest of the staff and things came up, is that? So you want to do your best when uh, they have shared something, right? That you're not, uh, they can share whatever they would like during the interview part of it. But when you're asking those questions, could it then be construed or in some way uh, perceived on their part that they weren't hired because they responded to a question that maybe was something personal in nature, uh, even though that curiosity part of it in the interview uh, process part of that interviewing, it's almost critical to stay with the question. So even though you're building a rapport, right? You're how you know assessing uh, what they're sharing, what's the interaction like? 
there are certain times that you can uh, create some exposure in that you've uh, in some way, if they perceive that as they were not selected because they responded to a question stating something that's either one under protected class or some sort of uh, disability of some kind, uh, they can make that case. I mean, obviously there are some things that are difficult to prove. Um, they would have to put that burden of proof out there. Uh, and that's why when you're doing your interview questions, you're wanting to ask the same questions to every candidate. You want to make sure that you are um, asking material that is unbiased, um, leaning towards, oh, I made a decision because of that. So great job description, measuring the essential functions of the role, who is the best candidate for this position specific to what is being asked of them, which is why I kind of said, if I go into that performance evaluation a year out, how would I rate this person a year from now against this job description? So it's it's one of those things, it's an area where it's not often brought up, uh, but it can be. So exposure, really. All right. <laughs> can we thank our experts today for donating their time and expertise? Again, their information is on the back counter. They got their business cards lined up. There are some other resources back there, and of course, cookies for you in the room. Um, the slides will be emailed to you, um, and the video today will be on YouTube as well. We also want to thank again STCU for sponsoring Ask the Experts, making it free to participate. We appreciate you, and uh, I think Miley brought a door prize. Yay. Yes. Uh, so Sarah's going to bring a little bowl up here. Good chance to win today. I know people. People are like that. Yeah. And have one on them. Oh. Well, what is our gift today? Um, we've got a bag of goodies. We've got um, an Abadam picnic blanket. It's nice. got a little Bluetooth speaker in there. Oh. It's got a cup. Conica Minolta is one of our. It's our Craig Griffith is the winner today. <laughs> right. Very cool. Would you please do us a favor and fill out the little survey uh, here so we can make these extremely valuable to uh, you. So you'll attend again and tell your business colleagues to join us. Um, you can just scan that QR code. You can match that slide there. Next one. Yeah, uh, so if you're on Zoom, you go ahead and scan that one and you can send that into us. If you're here, you can just flip it over uh, on your way out. That would be great. I've also left a tool in the back as well. It's a interview evaluation form. So as you're sitting there with your team, um, and you're in the interview, it just gives you sort of a checkoff sheet of what you're looking for. Of course, you can customize it to what you want. And let's see. Finally, Ask the Experts are always the fourth Tuesday of the month from uh, 3 to 4.30. The next one is on October 24th, and it's going to be HR pitfalls to avoid. We want to keep you all out of trouble. Yeah, yeah, we want to we keep you out of trouble, right? So we're going to talk about employee handbooks. And uh, other things that are just like, wow, I might have to, it's like, you know, what you don't know can't hurt you. No, I really can't hurt you. <laughs> so it's really important uh, to be compliant. So you don't want to miss that one. Tell our people to come as well to that. And hopefully you'll pick up something that you need to get back into compliance and then you'll join us again. So may your business continue to prosper in 2023. We didn't get a lot of questions today. So if you want to stick around, I think our guests will stick around here for a bit. If you want to ask a specific question to them. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day.